next I'm going to show you how a cross-site scripting attack works. So let's take a peek at the computers. I'm going to use the same two virtual machines, but this time I'm flipping the situation around. Now the victim machine itself is actually a web server. Uh, the victim machine's running Apache in a MySQL database. So the victim again is the web observer. So in this attack, I'm going to open Firefox on the attacker machine, the hacker computer. And in cross-site scripting attacks, you can actually fully pull them off through the browser. There are many tools out there that help attackers launch cross-site uh, scripting attacks, but you don't need them. You can do it through the browser. So for this attack, I'm going to go to a page called Victim XSS, or Victim Cross-Site Scripting, which is this victim computer. And this is a fake page that, that we've made that's actually pretending to be a blog, just a blog uh, page you might see all over the internet at blogger.com. And first, if I go ahead and click the Add to Blog, and I, I type a new blog entry, as an anonymous, non-logged-on user, you see down here the new blog entry shows up. It works just like a normal blog. But the problem is this web developer didn't properly code this, uh, this application that accepts user input. And because of that, a malicious attacker can actually insert script in this particular blog if he wanted to. And I'll start by showing you just a, a, a I mean, this is a, a script that you see very often in proof of concept. This is what you know security experts use just to prove a cross-site scripting exists on a site. So it's not really malicious, but uh, it will show that you can add a uh, script to this particular site. And if I submit this, you see a little pop-up here. So what happened is this anonymous entry down here that's blank contains script, and it's forcing this browser to pop up that script, which is just an alert saying cross-site scripting. But this is from the attacker's view. What's important to realize is now that this anonymous entry is on there, anyone that visits this particular site in the whole world is going to see that same script. It, it, the same script is going to execute on their computer. So now if I come to this site as a, a normal, normal user or maybe as the admin, I'm going to go ahead and log in as the admin. And I don't recommend you use this password. And now I'm going to view all the blogs. So even on some other computer, that script pops up. So that's kind of how cross-site scripting works. But what I'd like to do now is show you a more typical malicious example of how an attacker might use this. Uh, this button here is going to go ahead and reset the database of this site so that I can do a fresh attack. And now I'm going to cut and paste. Where do I have it? Oops. I'm going to cut and paste a, a slightly different script to this site. Copy. So now again, I'm going to add to the blog as an anonymous user. And this time, I'm going to put a much longer script. I'm going to submit it here, but don't pay much attention here. Now we go back again to a, a victim computer. Again, this could be the admin. This could be anyone that visits this site at all and views the blog. This time, when they could click on view the blog, they get a little pop-up here. And as you can see, this pop-up is pretending to be a Windows security alert. It even seems like it's not really attached to the page. And if I read it, it tells me that this site has a Trojan on it and it's infected my computer. And if I want to clean it, I should click this link here. But of course, if I click that fake link, it takes me to a drive-by download site, and pow, the drive-by download site downloads and executes uh, software on my computer. So this is how an attacker might use a cross-site scripting attack for phishing to get somebody to come to his malicious drive-by download site.